If someone were to stop and ask you which materials you should keep out of landfills, you'd probably name the usual suspects. Metals, plastics, glass, and paper. You might also throw in organics or food waste if you're a fan of composting, but chances are you might not mention household hazardous waste. Don't worry, you're not alone. HHW, as the pros call it, can be a bit of a blind spot for some people. Maybe it's because you're not totally sure what kinds of products qualify, or maybe you didn't realize that they can or should be disposed of differently. Looking for labels like danger, warning, caution, poison, flammable, or corrosive is a pretty good shortcut for identifying hazardous materials. To help you out a little bit more, we'll discuss a few specific examples. Believe it or not, batteries are considered household hazardous waste. They contain toxic chemicals like lead, mercury, and other heavy metals. And if they still contain a charge, they could even ignite or explode if mishandled. The good news is that there are a bunch of specialty battery recycling programs. Just look online to find some near you. Both fluorescent tube lights and compact fluorescent light bulbs contain mercury, which is toxic and shouldn't be put in the trash. Many hardware stores accept these bulbs for recycling though, so try taking them there instead. It's annoying that CFLs are household hazardous waste and shouldn't be put in the trash, but they're still the better option over incandescent bulbs, which aren't as energy efficient and have to be sent to landfills. As you can probably imagine, pesticides and herbicides are both toxic. Since their ingredients are quite literally poison, it's really important to make sure any leftovers are disposed of properly to avoid polluting the air, soil, or water. Check with your hauler for drop-off sites that will accept them. Likewise, household cleaners like bleach and ammonia are corrosive, which means they can cause skin damage and are toxic if ingested. The product labels can tell you how to dispose of them safely, and if not, you should check with your city to see if there are any specific rules. Aerosols, like spray paint or hairspray cans, and cylinders used to store compressed gas like propane, are two more types of hazardous materials. They're both ignitable and toxic, and aerosols can also be corrosive as well. The good news is that most suppliers will take back and or refill empty gas tanks, but you'll have to check with your hauler about aerosol cans. Flammable materials are probably no-brainers, but while you might recognize charcoal or lighter fluid as being hazardous, you might not realize that motor oil, pesticides, nitrate fertilizers, and even bleach are all flammable too. If you plan on discarding leftover charcoal briquettes, please wrap it in foil or a metal container and place it in the trash. Lump charcoal and its ash can be composted. For other flammable materials, please follow disposal directions listed on product labels. When it comes to medical waste like sharp needles, you probably already know that they need to be disposed of with care. But even medications can pose a problem, and flushing them down the drain or the toilet can actually contaminate groundwater. Instead of risking this, follow the EPA and DEA's guidelines for how to dispose of medical sharps and medicines responsibly. Besides having valuable metals and other components that can be salvaged for reuse, electronics like computers and other devices also contain lead and mercury and can be toxic if sent to a landfill. That's why more and more municipalities are making rules to ensure that e-waste gets properly recycled rather than trashed. Many electronic stores will accept used electronics, and you can also check with your municipality for drop-off locations. Both of these options will help ensure your e-waste is disposed of responsibly. Automotive products like antifreeze or windshield washer fluid also contain a bunch of different toxic chemicals and should be dropped off at either auto repair shops or hazardous waste collection sites if you have unused amounts. Finally, let's talk about the containers that these household hazardous waste products come in. The rules for disposing of the containers themselves can vary from state to state and might also be dependent on your waste hauler. If the container is made out of a recyclable material like metal or a certain type of plastic, you might be able to simply drop it in the recycling bin, but always make sure to check with your city or hauler first. 